again friends, this is Tiffany with Zia Waste back with an update on the worm tea that's now been brewing for 48 hours. Um, I had mentioned yesterday that I had gotten a water pump uh, for it. Um, the traditional brew method calls for an air pump. Um, so the water pump is circulating the water, not aerating the water so you can see that I have the stream coming out at the top um, here to try oh, to sorry about that I accidentally turned off the camera um, what I was saying is that this um, pump circulates the water um, an example my friend Wayne gave me was it's more like a natural circulation like a waterfall or a running river in comparison to the aeration method and to not be concerned that I'm not seeing uh, the big foaming bubbles that you normally see. So what my plan is, is to run an experiment where um, I compare one plant with um, no additives, which will be my control. One plant with just castings applied uh, to the topsoil one plant where I use my seeped tea, one plant where I use this circular water aerated tea, and then um, one where I use a traditional aerated uh, method. I did order um, a traditional air pump and um, water stone so that should be here in just a couple days and I'll mix up another batch when I get that in. So that's very exciting. Um, in the meanwhile, with this, now that it's been 48 hours, I'm gonna turn off this pump. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run this tea through a filter. Uh, and then I will put it in my sprayer and I'll be back. Just wanted to show you real fast what the tea looks like here. I started putting it in my uh, little sprayer. It's a much more reasonable color today. Um, in fact, I put some in a jar um, because I wanted to test to see if it has that carbonation effect that my steep tea has. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. When I steep tea, I typically um, will use rainwater in jars, uh, and then I put a tea bag, reusable tea bag in here full of castings, um, and leave the lid off so that it can aerate, but I go around and I shake the jars about 10 times a day. And then what I do, it creates like a carbonation effect and when I open the lid and it sounds like a soda that's how I know that the tea is done so I just wanted to test that out I took a little bit of this tea that I just made um, and stuck it in this jar so let's see if I pop the top if we get that sound sorry about the bad filming here um, all right we're gonna try it this way instead so got the tea in the jar, there's a little bit of air on the top. The lid on, it, it shake. And pop the top. Hopefully you can hear. That is the sound that I go for when I make my seep tea. So I am going to call this good bye color. And by the aeration sound, I feel confident enough to go ahead and put it on my rose bushes. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. All right, so back to my sprayer. I went ahead and filled it about a third of the way full with this aerated tea. And I'm going to add about one to one parts water. Rainwater, I mean tap water, I like to use rainwater, but 
once again it's snowing in New Mexico. Keep getting snow and not rain. So I got nothing in my rain. I am adding warm water. Um, I'm not sure if that truly makes a difference or not, um, but I did read that microbes and that bacteria prefer the warmer environment to a colder environment, so I tend to add warm water to the tea and to the extract. So. Okay, so that's all set up. bad boy outside. I'm out here at the front of my house with the uh, rose bushes. This week for the bus to pass there. Uh, this weekend I soaked the ground real good with the worm juice, um, the non-aerated seat worm juice that I made this weekend. So you can see how nice and dark the soil is and the um, branches on these rose bushes are starting to turn red and green colors. Uh, now I rent and my landlord owns both sides of these. So just in comparison, this is my neighbor's rose bush and soil. And I'm thinking I'm gonna spray some of the tea on here just to be nice to this guy, but you can just see the how cracked and dry his soil is. Just a comparison to one week, everything that's going on with mine. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, I'm gonna put these rose bushes in comparison um, to the rose bushes that are on the side of my house. Um, but I thought while I was out here, I thought maybe I'd spray the neighbors too, just so that we have a good side-by-side um, -side comparison. Oh, I should note this cute little kitty litter bin that I have right here is my community drop-off for the worms. Um, I leave this out here and I check it once or twice a week whenever I need extra food and my neighbors actually come by and bring me their fresh scraps, um, their eggshells. Um, and so I have, I believe, five households total contributing to the worms at this point. So this is an easy way that I don't have to be home and people can just drop off their scraps for me and they don't have to um, waste a container. All right, so let me go ahead. I'm going to start spraying the neighbor's rose bush down. Rose bush. This side of the house gets a lot more sun, so this one already is doing better than the ones in the front yard, which is why I didn't get some of the other warm tea. But I'm very happy and excited to see how this is going to compare. So yeah, I'm trying to get the roots, I'm trying to get the stems, I'm trying to get where the flowers are going to be. If there were flowers, I'd be spraying that as well. Just dousing the plant as much as possible. All right. 
I'm going to take the rest of this jug and I'm just going to spray it all around my grass in my yard. I think that's it for the actual plants, but you can see I have lots of grass here to water. And um, we'll come back and check on the rose bushes and I'll also post an update when I get the um, water pump in and start the next batch of brew. So again, thanks for uh, tuning in today. I hope you all have a blessed day.